Okay, folks, I've had my 3D printer for a while now, so let's talk about living with a 3D printer and the kind of natural updates that you find yourself making to it. First off, the, uh, the printer came with some sp spool holders. Mine's a dual printer. It's got two print heads. So it came with a spool for the right uh, printer and a spool for the left printer. Unfortunately, the spools are this big and they're both the same and they're meant to hook into this little hole. Works quite nicely for this particular spool of white. Oops. But when you buy material from different vendors and uh, different manufacturers and different distributors, they, the spool area, the center, comes in different sizes. And if I try really hard, I, I can't get that one on there. It's a few millimeters too small. And if I come over here and I show you my little storage bin, because you tend to stockpile them, especially for different colors over time. Let's take a look at one of the other ones. We'll talk about that in a minute. So here's a spool of black material and Oh, look at that. That's ridiculous. There's, that's no more than a centimeter. So there's no way that's going on. So one of the first modifications I made was to find and download and print a couple of small uh, material spool holders. So I swapped this out, 3D printed this guy, and lo and behold, the black spool goes on. Now, it's not the greatest because it doesn't have a way of holding the spool on at the end. And I also ended up printing another one that had a, an actual hook on the end, but the, the print kind of failed almost uh, probably three quarters of the way through, but it was still salvageable. So you end up with something like this, but still that doesn't fit that, but it does fit that and it moves around a little bit but you get the job done in the end so we have an issue with holding the spools on to the back of the machine now the next factor that came into play you've already seen the solution is when the material comes off the spool it has to come up through the tube and down to the print head and as the print head moves around the spool and the holder and everything have to be able to move smoothly through the system. And the bracket that the system came with, which I can't even find, I looked in my, my bin of rejected prints, and it was much too close to the machine, and it was binding, because when the material is, say, coming off the spool over here, it would have to come way over here, and then up, and then over. So... I found this guy on the internet. Somebody had the exact printer and had exactly the same problem. So I downloaded his file, printed it, and it's been brilliant. It holds the uh, material right in place. Um, the Teflon tube goes right in. Everything is great. So I lived with this for quite a long time. But then I started reading more and more about the environment for the uh, material and the way you need to store it. The only kind of material I've used is something called PLA. Can we see that here? Yeah, 1.75 millimeter PLA 3D filament. This is a plant fiber based plastic. I think it's called polylactic acid. Uh, it's very forgiving, it's very flexible, it's got a great range of printing temperatures, um, it's cheaper than some of the other kinds of materials, there's, there's other ones, there's ABS, there's some that are kind of rubberized, there are some that uh, have other kinds of characteristics like extremely strong, but PLA is a good overall um, material just for hobby printing. So, but the problem with PLA is it doesn't like two things. It doesn't like humidity and it doesn't like sunlight. They both degrade the plastic. 
to the point where it's either difficult to print with, it makes a mess, or the filament will snap as it's being fed in, and then you come back and only half of your print was done and the print head was moving around with no material flowing through it. So you really need to understand to treat your material with the kind of care that it requires. So that brings me to this little plastic bin. I bought this bin to store the material that I had opened out of the package but hadn't yet fully used. Now these are still in their shrink wrap. This is the best way to use to leave them until you're ready to print. But for the others, like this black, I had been storing four spools at a time. Now, what this guy is, is a desiccant pack. You see these kinds of things uh, smaller in pill bottles. They absorb moisture to keep the product in better shape. And I actually bought a couple of packs of these from a little Japanese-based kind of dollar store in my town here in Thailand. And so, along with this uh, bin that I bought at the local grocery store, boom, I have an airtight package with desiccant inside and that's probably the best way to treat your material and, and keep it out of the sun, obviously. Now, how do we move forward from here? So, I found a super cool project uh, from an email I get from a website called Instructables. It's got lots of great things and there's a big emphasis on 3D printing. And there was a project which was a combination of uh, material holder plus dispenser plus keeping out the moisture and the humidity in the air and I thought okay this is exactly what I'm looking for because it solves several of my problems it keeps the material happy by keeping out the moisture and it solves my dispensing issues back here so let's jump over to the website and take a quick look at that project Okay, here's the Instructables webpage for the project called 3D Printer Filament Dry Box by Becca Thuia, also known as Becky Stern. And this is what we're shooting for. A humidity proof box that both holds and dispenses four colors of printer material for us. So she walks us through what we need. We need to have a uh, two meters of four millimeter Teflon tubing. And she gives us two parts to print. The first is the rod bracket holder, and then the nuts and bolts that the material goes through. Then she shows us how to build it. First, we install the rod holders. Then we drill and install the dispensers and then we load up the material and we start printing. So let's have a look and see how we can make this work. All right, let's walk through the parts and the construction of the box from the Instructable. First thing I did was I printed out the two uh, bar holders, which I've trimmed back because the, um, the space inside the box is just about right. I've got the four spool material thread nutty kind of things or thread bolt and the matching nuts and uh, one thing to know is they are kind of brittle they snap off if you apply a little bit too much torque don't ask me how I know this and then I got some rubber washers from the hardware store because o-rings are not to be found and then I started working on the box so if we come over to the box and we pull out our desiccants, first thing I did was locate and drill the holes for the bracket holder, the bar, on this side. Then I replicated it to the other side and very quickly realized I made a measuring error because of the, the shape of the box. You can see it goes up at an angle on this side to facilitate those wheels for some reason. So 
my cut was off by that much. So I re-drilled the holes and let's go ahead and do the construction so far and see what it looks like. Okay, we've got the four filament holders in place and there's a rubber washer on each side that's purely for a humidity block. I would recommend just finger tightening them. We're not trying to make this waterproof and uh, they, they definitely do snap off if you apply too much torque. So if you really want to crank these down, probably use a different material than PLA and you'll have better results. Okay, let's get the tube holders in place. Okay, the brackets are in and you can see how they're at a slight angle in the front. That's to keep them from falling out and trying to roll away. Um, and I bought this piece of uh, stainless steel bar at the hardware store. It was the best I could find. It was actually part of a towel rack that only cost 200 baht, which is about $6.50. And it's, I had to cut it down to size, but it's exactly perfect for the brackets. And for those uh, those two holes that I drilled in error, I just ran a, a bolt and a nut through them to keep them airtight. So let's try and put some of our material inside. All right, let's take a look and how we encounter our next problem. Let's take a look and see how the material moves. Now the black material is going to move quite smoothly. It's on the bar, it's rolling, there's no resistance. That's great. But the white material is actually rubbing against the bottom of the box because this is the biggest box I could find that had a seal in the lid, an airtight seal. So this is rolling against the bottom of the box, this one too, and this one too. And I had no space to work with up here. The other issue is this back and forth. All this slop, if you recall, the most of the material has a rather large hole and the black one has a small hole. So this is where we're seeing all of this slop come into play. So what I decided to do is give these three a way to have a small hole. And let me grab this. This is what I came up with. I designed it and printed it on the printer. And it acts as a, a shim of sorts that goes in the big hole and gives us a small hole. And it's got a flange on one side so it won't fall through. So I made up four of these just for completeness. Let's see how they work. Okay, the shims are now in place. We have very little back and forth and the material spools are all turning nicely with no issues. You can see the spool there in the side. Everything is wonderful. So now, how do we th actually thread the material on each spool through the hole? Yeah, that, that's not pretty. Okay, so what you have to do is roll the spool back about a foot roll about two feet of material off each spool, try and get your arm back in there, push the material through the hole enough that it's not going to fall back inside. Then you gently maneuver the material all back in place, which is impossible to do with one hand. But yeah, this is, this is not very photogenic. I'll get back to you. Okay, we're in. Now, if we look back here, we've got all this material pulled out, which is going to be sacrificial at a certain point to when you actually load it up into the printer. So the step after this is you want to put your desiccants in. You grab the ones that I've collected over time. I'm just going to shove those in. I have no idea if they if they're completely sucked all the moisture that they can suck. And we've got our little Japanese guy. Put him in. 
This is easier to do with two hands in the end. Then we snap the back on. That's going to be tough, so let me get back to you again. And we're in. We are snap closed and we are loaded up. So now the goal is to find a way to put this in the printer's region in such a way that the material will come out nicely. Now you can already see that I have stolen my little table from my balcony and that's going to be my material platform. So let's put that in place. Okay, so our holders in place. There's the printer. But how do we get the material to stay nicely as it goes into the print head? This is not recommended to leave this flying out in the breeze. So the Instructable had us acquire some Teflon tubing, which will go one end fits beautifully into the four millimeter hole inside there. The other end goes into the print head and then we've got everything we need. So let me get back to you. Okay, so let's wrap up. The box is in position, the tubing's in place, the spools are ready to go, everybody's happy. But that led me to one final observation on the project. I've got these two are in the print head, everything's fine. We've got great range of travel, the uh, nothing binds up and everything's good there. But at any time, two of the tubes will not be actually in the print head and it has the ability of letting humidity back up in the tube and then into the box. So what I did is I designed and printed out some of these end caps. It's simply a way to shove up over the end of the tube and keep it airtight. It's got a little knurl at the end so I can pull it off as needed with the hole just big enough to slide on comfortably but, but definitely hold itself in place. And so that's what I did. I've got two of these guys attached right now and they go on when they're not in use. They just stay out of the way under there, and that way they're not interfering, nothing binds up. But we have a humidity-proof box with my little temporary towel keeping it out of the sun, and we're ready to print at any time in any of four colors, and we're treating the material pretty much as best we can, given the conditions. So... Thanks again so much for the Instructable. It was everything I was looking for. And with a couple of minor uh, updates to the design, it's working perfectly for me. So big thanks and happy 3D printing.